Hello goat lovers, this is Crystal with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. What started with four chickens and two goats quickly grew into a lifestyle. So we moved, got more land, and of course, more goats. Follow our adventures as we grow our herd, our food, and our family. goat lovers today we're going to train the bucklings to the electric fence so we use the premier one solar shock 120 it's a solar power energizer and it works great I bought these T posts at our local tractor supply they're like two bucks each and I like these white ones for the training pin because they have eight notches so you can see I'm using seven of them right now to train the bucklings so I went with the wire as compared to the netting because of the, it's just cheaper. You get more distance for your dollar. So this stuff works best here in Arizona if I wet the ground first along the edges. They need to fear this fence for it to work. It needs to shock them good. This is 8,000 volts. It should sound pretty good when they get it. They should notice it and they'll still test it a couple of times. but. When they learn to fear the fence, when they learn to respect it, they're going to be out grazing. They're going to have a, a better quality of life than just being all pinned up. Another thing, when you first put them in here, I'm going to put all three bucklings in here. If I don't, if I just brought one over here, he's just going to jump through it and run all the way back to his brothers. So if I put all three in here, if one of them does jump through it, he's just going to want right back in. Most likely, he'll just jump back through it to be with his brothers they're a herd animal. So of course you're gonna need a gate to get in and out of this stuff. I just use a pallet. I use a couple of concrete stakes here to hold it into place. I can close my my gate. Then I bumped into a problem with the goats jumping on the gate the whole time. So I uh, devised this little system here to where I just run an extra piece of wire right across now they won't jump on that gate once they figure out that that fence bites. I set this thing up with the button facing in. The reason I do that is because if I have to get in here for anything to move some water around or something, I don't want to open that gate. If I open that gate, all the goats run out. So I can shut it off from the outside, climb right in, and then turn it on again from the inside. So. Everybody's situation is a little different. Every environment's a little different. This is what has worked for me and it's what worked for us here in Arizona. Now the hard part will be getting all three of them over here at the same time. They slip or they stop. So it won't choke them. So they'll be a minute finishing up that scratch before they start exploring. Probably use the time to go get them a water bucket real quick. 
Edge gets it first. I doubt he has learned his lesson yet. And they'll just keep probing it, and keep testing. Each one's got to get it about three times. And then I'll, when they join the, the herd out on the pasture, they'll, they'll test that one too. I gotta get him back in before they try to break out. That was close. We got him back in there. <coughs> so I think it's gonna work. We had a crazy moment when Edge jumped out there. Had to run and shut it off, get some scratch in there, throw him in there, tighten the wires, turn it back on. But he's in there and he hasn't tried it again. So, I think it's gonna work. Derek's been training these boys while I've been at work to the fence because they are two weeks banded now. And we wanna introduce them to the herd so we are going to have to move them, but to do that, first we have to move them, uh, we have to move the does all down into the bottom two stalls, so. But look at them, they're doing, they're doing good, they're scared of the fence, it worked. Be able to get them out grazing. Awesome. Boys ready to meet the girls? So let's go get that ready. Close it. You get down. So we got them all down in this bottom pen. What we're gonna do is open up this middle pen so that we can get these boys into that top pen. Because like we like to have them in a pen for the first night at least so that they can introduce each other through the fence and get to know each other so it's not such a, these girls can be mean, that's why. This is what it should look like at two weeks, guys. See how shriveled up it is? Come here, you. You're a perfect example. Check it out. This point too, you want to start watching around the band because it will start breaking from the skin. It is a little bit there, if you guys can see that. 
Oh, hold on, buddy. Starting to break through just a little. So, once it starts breaking around the skin, you just you just keep an eye on it. You want to make sure nothing's getting infected. And blue coat works really well. Um, it actually helps dry it out so that they'll fall off quicker. But yeah, so another two to four weeks or so, they're, they'll just fall off. But they're doing really good. They're healing really well. They're not acting bucky like they were. So now we have them in this top pen, and they're just going to be along the fence with the does. We're going to let the does have the bottom two stalls, and they're going to get to know each other this evening. Is that right? Yes. How'd you do on the fence? They're curious. See all their hair up. <laughs> Something came up for Laura and Bindi's new owner, and they didn't get to leave on Wednesday, so they get to stay with us another week. Oh, girl. As you guys see, Lodi is still blooping through all the fences, so she's in here trying to introduce herself early to the boys. But uh, thank you guys for watching. These boys are going to stay in here for the night. Those girls will be along the fence with them, and tomorrow we'll be introducing them to the herd. So, see you guys next time. <laughs>